I've heard people say that too much of anything is not good for you. But I don't know about that. As many times we've loafed and we shared love and we've made loaf. Which doesn't seem to me like it's enough. It's just not enough uh Would you just look at this? I don't know if you've looked outside lately, but for us, it's been really nasty. So we thought it would be a perfect opportunity to do something new for this week's video. We are going to be making the best tasting low carb meatloaf we have ever made. Here's all the ingredients you will need to make this wonderful dish. Please feel free to substitute any of the ingredients you see here to make it your own or you can try it just like it is and see how you like it. You will need a half a cup of almond flour, six ounce can of tomato paste, one medium sized onion, two large eggs, no sugar added ketchup, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, four teaspoons of minced garlic, any kind of bacon you like, and three pounds of ground beef. Start by chopping the onion. You can chop it any way you like. The smaller the pieces are, the easier it will be to incorporate into all the ingredients. We like to use a food chopper for this. Add your ground beef into a large bowl and start adding all your ingredients together, except for the ketchup. That comes in later. Add your large chopped onion, two eggs, half a cup of almond flour, minced garlic, and tomato paste. Now if you guys aren't too concerned with carb intake, feel free to substitute the almond flour for breadcrumbs, oats, or any other type of flour of your choosing. Also, you can use regular ketchup instead of the no sugar added, or you can simply omit the ketchup altogether if you would prefer to. Next comes the Worcestershire sauce. This gives such a nice flavor to the meatloaf. Add a little salt to taste. Some black pepper and you are ready to start mixing everything together. Now if this isn't your first time making meatloaf, you know this isn't how you mix meatloaf. This is how you mix meatloaf. Ah, oh, yeah, baby. You know how I like it. What? You can place all the ingredients in a baking dish, place it in a loaf pan, make your own loaf and cook it on a baking sheet, or do what we like to do, flatten it out and place it on a baking sheet. It seems to cook faster this way, and it gives the whole meatloaf a crispy taste, like the end pieces, which are the best part. Try to pack the ingredients as tight as you can to try to eliminate any kind of cracks in the loaf. That way, it doesn't fall apart while cutting into it. Add some bacon on top, or you can omit the bacon altogether, but I find that it adds some really nice flavor to the meatloaf. It's now ready to go into the oven. Place the meatloaf in the oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees for 30 minutes. We place it on the middle rack so that it will evenly cook. After the 30 minutes are up, remove the baking sheet from the oven and add your ketchup, making sure to spread it evenly across the top of the meatloaf. You can skip this part if you don't want to add ketchup. Then place it back in the oven. This time, we move the rack closer to the top to make the bacon crispier. Cook for 25 to 45 more minutes. Time will vary depending on the thickness of the loaf. We started with 25 and checked it after the time was up. You want to make sure the internal temperature of the meatloaf reaches 160 degrees. And here is the end product. Doesn't that look delicious? Let the meatloaf rest for about 10 minutes before cutting into it.
Enjoy! This is something new that we would like to incorporate into our videos, but we weren't sure where to put it at. Should we make a new series for this? Are you guys interested in these kind of things? Let us know in the comments below. Do you remember watching shows on PBS? Interesting, sometimes colorful, usually weird, but wholesome. Yeah, that's probably our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. We're not done with you yet. 